All right, I'm here with Jeff Chan, who just did a seminar here in Japan. Thank you for coming out to see us and having us do a seminar with you. And now I want to show him something he's not used before. Never used before. Which you see in all my videos is the wooden dummy. And why we use it, and I'll explain how it's applied. But he's also going to learn a set today. He's going to learn one of the wooden dummy sets. Probably set three and maybe set one. But we'll try it out today. I want you to try and see if you can use this in sparring as well. Okay. So I'll show you the techniques mm -hmm. and what the theory behind it is. And then maybe you'll tell me some similarities behind the dummy and what you do already. Okay. And let's see what we can do. Sure. Let's do it. All right. This is set three, pox out. We're going to pox out the hand like this. You notice the dummy arms are out a bit. So I'm attacking the center line by putting it to where the deflection would be. And this helps me to understand where to stop. Because I don't want to over deflect, right? Like what I think you saw you told us before is like if you over deflect then you're way open, right? Mm -hmm. So by keeping it here, I have a lot of time responding to the other side. So if something happens here, like you said the hook happens, I can, I can stop the hook, right? Right? Then boom. So I want to be within this space. And the dummy structure helps me to learn not to overplay and how to use center line more than slapping. Sense. Moving around rapidly, right? Yes, yes. So that's the idea. So we call this pop the uh, set three, pop cell three times. So just working on moving hands in the center line, and then when I hit it, I pop the hand. And when I hit this one, I pop the hand out. So it's very narrow. I want to stay within this frame and let my hands reset every time. So I'm using One, this two, elliptical three. motion, right? So okay. You see that kind of makes you faster too. Yep. It helps you coordinate your hands to the chamber without having to rely on the direct in and out. Because if I go direct in and out, I have to go around my hands. To go over top. Yeah, so it's faster to go over the top. I can go direct and I can go direct, see? It goes straight in, straight in, and I can make my line a straight line instead of a rounded line or under having to dodge my own arm. Yeah. So one, two, that's how I can do this motion very quickly. Because we're just using an elliptical motion, hit hit straight line, drop, straight line, drop, straight line. So what we're gonna do is a practice. Sure, like this? Yeah. One, uh, two, uh, three. Uh, yeah. One, three. Exactly. Yeah. Two, three. Yeah? Yeah? One, two, three. I'm gonna have to get used to it. This is what it hurts. Yeah, it, it, it does develop the training of the hands a bit, but also you want to use more solid parts. So, like, everything in the meantime right, was no gloves. Yeah. So, they're working on just utilizing and developing their forms and their palms to hit hard objects or bare fists, right? Okay. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. Let's do three more. One, two, three. Uh, yeah. And I'm not two, turning my shoulders. Am I exaggerating this or I'm keeping it? Straight? Yeah, so that's the idea. So sometimes we move the shoulders a little bit, but um, not too much. Because if you commit this far, then you've got to move one all the way to move the other side. Got so on. the smaller the better, sometimes, but it all depends really. If I don't move my shoulders at all, I'll be faster. Got if I move a little bit, I'll get more extension, more power, but I'll have to commit a little bit more, right? Yeah. So I usually there's a little bit of shoulder movement, but not a lot. Gotcha. Even some, they train in the basics, we don't move the shoulders at all. Uh, See? That way, if you start there, then maybe naturally you start to move your shoulders, but that's fine. After a while, the real, real thing, you probably move shoulders a little bit like that. And then I might shift off like this later, and this is more of an advancing, they teach you how to shift off to the side. So then, without having to actually step or anything move, right? Like I did with you in the video, right? When you hit, I'm gonna be on this side. So all I did was kind of shift a bit, right? Maybe I move my feet just slightly. Everything is small movements because I'm working on such a close range, right? I don't have to make big movements out here because I want to close instead of be far away, right? Right, right, right. So I just want to move enough, just enough to get to the outside. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna get to here. I'm gonna move to the side out here, just shifting my weight. Two, three, four. Yeah, and this is going to be a chop. Three, the same hand. So in the traditional chop. Yep. But like I said in the video before, you could also do the same hand. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Outside hand. Chop. Like right. And from here, direct to a punch. Direct to the body. Yeah. One, two, three. Head, body. On the side, right? Bam. Like that. One, two, three. 
outside. Chop. Bam. Got it. Got it. Got it. One, two, three. Outside. Cry chop. Bam. Oh, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, okay, but then you know what? The dummy the dumb is not meant to be hit by that. Gotcha. It's more of a more of a structural training. So and I'm sitting too bladed. Like, I gotta do more squared. Squared up for now. So squared up in the beginning. Again, all the basics happen by trying to get used to the center line and the forward instead of bladed for now. By having the body here, I can switch to this side and move to this side. When I blade it, I have to move really big to switch sides. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. So when I'm here, I switch to this side now. Boom. I'm going right here. Boom. And there. So that way I can practice both sides. Boom. Wing Chun's very ambidextrous. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Keeping the center line allows me to use both hands at the same time. Right, yeah. Right. This is really cool. Yeah. This is really cool. One, two, three. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. boom. Just like that. And then, can I see that last one? Yeah, like yeah. turn to the side. One, two, three. And then one, two, one. Boom. Boom. It also shows where the line is. If you were to extend this farther, right? The only reason why it's short is because, like I said with our other video, we're aiming for forms more so, right? So the, the control is closer to the opponent and then, rather than way up here. Because a real arm would be longer, right? Let's see right. how it's like, right with the elbow almost. So I'm controlling around the elbow distance. I see. More, yeah. So that's the idea, keeping the control. Yeah. Start in the movement. And then I step to the side. Crack drop. Cool. Okay. Boom. 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 Good. Yeah, it's good. And you're you're doing well to control that hand again. So everything I do. How come like, every time? When, every time you hit, yeah, I hear a nice yeah. clack, clack, clack. Which is called one inch power, right? One so inch one power. inch power. So like Red Bruce Lee was famous for that one inch drag, right? So at the end. I'm doing this little mm, pop here. You're pop. doing a little pop on your wrist. Like that, so pop, pop, pop. And Sounds here. so good. Bam, bam, right. Pop, bam, bam. So there's a little bit of explosive energy at the end. Mm -hmm. It's like when you throw a punch, you're going to snap, snap the punch it, yeah. at the end, right? So you're going to snap the punch at the end. So we do that with our blocks now. If I'm attacking the middle, this could be a block, it could be a punch. Sometimes as I attack the center line, it turns into a block, and then I can get to my punch. Sometimes my block ends up becoming an attack, right? Yes. And same thing, so. There's no difference. As long as I attack the center line, I'm always directing my attacks to the opponent, whether it be blocks or it's going to be after strikes, or I can use my form to cut over, almost like you're doing with the cutting over with your um, parry. Now, this, when you do it, if you were to like put the fingers there, that could be an eye drag, eye drag. as you deflect my, my punch, oh. right? You use the form, deflect the center line, but also this is an attack at the same time with the eye drag. Yeah. So, that's where you see a simultaneous attack and defense come in with the same hand yep. or of course with the opposite hand. I can use one hand to block, one hand to attack. And now they're moving together instead of like one, two, two right? and three. Where one hand's back here and one hand's back here. Now one hand's here blocking and one hand's here blocking. So that's what I was going to say about this is it's teaching you how to go direct to attack and defense. Attack yep. defense. There's no passive hand where I'm stopping here. This is more, if I'm sparring though, whenever I'm not controlling, I definitely want to protect. Mm -hmm. But if I can feel the hand, why let go, right? I can control the arm, then I should just control the arm the whole time. So this teaches you to control the arm. So as I hit, I'm going to keep contact with this, even when I'm attacking. And then keep contact and trap it again. So I never let this go actually. That's what we call sticking, trying to stick to the point. So when we get close, we want to continue to trap and hit. Because if I'm at this close distance, if we just keep attacking each other like this, and he's attacking me, we're just kind of just slugging it out. Yes, yes, right? yes. But if I have close distance, if I can control the hand, now he can't hit me, and I can hit him. Right? Uh. So as long as my hands are in control of the opponent, I have opportunity to stay here. And I'll, I know I'm not going to get hit, because I'm always trapping uh -huh. the hand and hitting, and trapping and hitting. So there's never a point where this can hit me. Gotcha, gotcha. You know I mean? Okay, yeah. so should I try that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, the snap! There you go. Yeah. What, what do you do with this hand? This hand, yeah, just block. This one, yeah, I can stay up here. Like that, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. It's kind of, this is the word passive hand. Whenever the hand is active, it stays protecting the center line. Because in all my um, main targets, 
right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the, the hand just obstructs. It's an obstructing our hand. Actually. And the way we were able to deflect is we just kind of extend that sound like gotcha. I did in the other video. So we protect this by keeping the obstruction in the sound. Got it, got it. And if we go to the outside, then we go here, right? We just go direct from where, we, where the hand is to straight to the block, to straight to the attack, straight to the deflection. And that's the idea. So that's set three. And that was uh, the whole thing on that. Now the real, you know, to where you're practicing it, you do a jab. Right? This is deflection. Yeah. You do props. This is the flex. You do another jab, and then this is here, right? And then one more time, the other side, boom, this is there, right? And then this could be a hit. Sometimes the arm drops like this, right? But let's say you're really tight with your, uh, with your hands. So now this is a hit as much, but this is a low punch, right? The other side, you deflect, boom, and just continue here. Then I can chop over again. So let's say, like, there are strong head defense like that. Then maybe this one hits them in the nose or the eyes or the face, right? But the body is open now, right? And then I can trap this thing. Yeah. So, yeah. This might oh, hit somewhere, nice. the body will go, and then you can trap the hand. Hey. Right, right. I see. Yeah. So that's what you're doing in a dummy set. So I'm doing exactly what the dummy set is doing. If we do a dummy set, one, two, three, and then punch the other side. Chop and punch. And then other side. Chop and punch, right? That way I can hold this hand the whole time. I'm always feeling what that is. Okay, so you yeah. punch me. So I stand here? No. Yeah. Okay, so you uh, so I, I, I didn't look at the the with pop. Yeah. Uh, okay, gotcha. Got got so two, two, three, and then boom, yeah. boom, yeah. boom. Yes. And on the side. Boom, boom, boom. boom. bam. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that's it. Yeah. It's head body, yeah. Gotta get a little looser. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, oh, good. seven, eight, oh, nine. Oh, yeah. I feel like my legs are kind of awkward. Yeah, let's, let's focus on that a little bit. Boom. Boom. Shifting the weight a little bit to the left. Right foot and my left foot. So you'll, you'll feel like you're grounding off. Foot. Yes. You'll feel like you're grounding off that yeah. foot. And when you do this, and you'll feel like you're grounding off that foot. Boom. Yeah. Boom. There okay, so you go. go. Yeah. So Boom. one, two, three. Four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, Bam. Bam. nine. That's it, yeah. So one, two, three, boom, ba-boom. Yeah, boom, ba-boom. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then that makes it for vertical fist. One reason why, and I talk about this always in my first class, is the vertical fist has a safe, safer hit for if you're getting some, hitting some close range. If your hand is this way at close range, you know, that would be terrible, right? Because the wrist is like in a weird position. Yeah. So vertical fist allowed us to attack close range. And if you look at it, your body is protected, your sand line is protected, using the form to stop. Yeah, to stop the arm. I can cut over the line, you see? If I'm like this, there's no control there. I see. I can't control the hands. I'm going around it, which yeah. in a way, it's a different theory. I'm avoiding your hands when I turn my hands. Is what I usually use when I turn my hand. I'm trying to avoid contact. Mm -hmm. When I want to make contact, I use the forms as a way to make contact at the same time as I have a strike at the same time. So the forms are wedging my attacks mm -hmm. into the into the body. Yeah, yeah. So I'm cutting it like almost like you're doing when you're cutting your you're yeah, doing Jerry, yeah, yeah. You're cutting it, right? Jerry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're cutting it. So I'm cutting it, but now the cut becomes a hit. hit. You know what I mean? See, and the other see. side too. The cut oh. becomes a hit. Right? So, if, yeah. so you throw your jab at me, yeah. I can come here. Yeah. And then you throw yours. Boom, throw right again. there, yeah. Boom, and throw it again. Ha! Bang! Yeah. Ha! Bang! And then you yeah. throw another back up here. Bang! Bang! Yes. Okay, okay, I like yes. it. I like it.